I uh, really uh, don't know why it is that uh, all of us are so committed to the sea. I think it's because, in addition to the fact that the sea uh, changes and the light changes and uh, ships change, it's because uh, we all came from the sea. Actually, it's more like a delivery than a, a death or a funeral. It's a rebirth. Just think of all the stuff that's going to choose to live there. So I think it's great. These cement structures are man-made reefs. They're part of a plan to help rebuild the ocean's habitat. But these are also tombs. Cremated remains have been mixed into the cement. These reefs will soon become living monuments on the ocean floor. had no intention of getting into the funeral business. His obsession was with the ocean and restoring the diminishing coral reefs. What we're doing is just forming the foundation bedrock for all this whole new foundation for life. He created cement structures similar to natural reefs. Here, fish and underwater life found a new home. To go down there and visit and see all the different diversity of life that us on land, we never see that. We don't, we don't see the real microcosm of how it all fits together. But everything changed when one day, Don's father-in-law made a bizarre request. And he said, you know, Don, uh, when I pass away, I'm going to be cremated. I have favorite ashes. Uh, I'd like you to take my remains, put them in those artificial reefs you built. I'd rather spend eternity down there with all that life and excitement going on than in a field with a bunch of old dead people. At first, it sounded like a joke. But for Don and his wife, Jane, they thought, why not? We laughed about it. Other people thought it was a great idea when we ran the idea by them. It was something I knew that we could do for my father, that he would enjoy, that he loved knowing about. When Jane's father died in 1998, his wish to be part of a reef was finally honored. After getting the proper permits, Don mixed his father-in-law's ashes with concrete and created a reef structure. This unique memorial now rests deep within the Gulf of Mexico. Actually diving on my father-in-law's reef, um, every time I get a chance to do that, I get a little misty just thinking that I carried out his wishes and uh, he's happy and it's created a whole new environment and ecosystem down there for all the little creatures of the ocean. At first, it seemed like a one-time tribute, but the idea soon caught on. It's a perfect resting place for people who love the ocean so much, they want to be a part of it eternally. I get different reactions, but overall, you know, some people grasp it immediately, what we do. Some people say, well, that's kind of different. We're reef builders. We're not building underwater cemeteries. Um, this is giving something back. We got this one and two more to go. A thriving company near Atlanta, Georgia, they've created over 150 memorial reefs, with many more on the way. Don's primary business continues to build reefs to help revive natural habitats. The majority of his reefs are purely cement. A small but growing number also contain the cremated remains of loved ones. Basically, we're, we're taking the remainder of the concrete and remains mixture, mixed it with water to clean the rest of it and put it into the mold to create the memorial reef. For many families, mixing the ashes with the cement is an important part of the process. Nora Ralston is here to oversee her sister's last wish. So now we're just mixing our ashes in the water. Yeah, what that does is it just gets it good and soaked in with the water. She loved the water so much. It was yeah, great for her. Okay. Nora's sister, Robin, was adventurous in life. When Robin became fatally ill with leukemia, she did not want to be buried in a cemetery. She wanted to be part of the sea. 
a lady came by and wanted to give her a cemetery plot, and Robin said, well, you know, I really want to be buried at sea. And the lady said, they don't allow that anymore. And Robin said, oh, you just don't know me very well. I will find a way. And she did. What we're going to do is do this just kind of a little bit at a time. As they pour the mold, Nora mixes in her sister's ashes with the cement. There's also a plaque which will identify this reef as Robin's. The mold is almost ready, but for Nora, it's not complete until she leaves her own handprint in the cement. A final gesture, a way of saying goodbye. I saw something today during the casting that I'm going to encourage our families to do from now on if they're here. I want our families to put a handprint on their loved one's memorial where it goes down. That was beautiful. The molds can take several weeks to dry. After enough time has passed, these reefs are ready to be taken into the ocean. Whichever way you want to rig them, I leave that up to y'all. They'll be hauled to a predetermined location where reefs are needed to help restore sea life. A convoy of volunteers will tow them out to sea. I'm George Frankel with Eternal Reefs, and I want to tell you how much we appreciate your time, your energy, your coming out here and helping to build this reef. What we were doing was setting each boat up with a string of memorial reefs, made sure that they were floating properly in the water so that they'd be able to float easily behind the boats and not create too much drag and not snap off the lines that we've got. We have an armada going out there. Meanwhile, families board a chartered boat. Each has a loved one about to become part of a living reef. Many of the people who have chosen this share some common traits a love of adventure and the sea, and a desire to contribute somehow, even after death. My mom was a normal 50s woman, and then she decided that she was missing a few things in life and just decided to do what she wanted to do. She just loved being in the water. Um, she loved the ocean, she loved the wave. My husband and I were divers. We got into diving together. He didn't like to do things normally, I guess would be the, the way to put it. This way, he's part of nature. He's doing some good. He's part of something that he really loved doing. I just wish I could be underwater with him. <laughs> Families watch as the reefs are towed to their position. It's now time to remove the floats and guide them down to the ocean's floor. As each reef is set free from its floats, Don announces the person who is now also a part of that reef. James C. Bender, John Henry Norell, and Charlene Pat Grove. As the reefs make their final descent to the bottom of the sea, Don reads a quote from John F. Kennedy. We are tied to the ocean, and we go back to the sea, whether it is to sail or to watch it. We are going back from whence we came. For Nora, who helped create her sister Robin's reef, knowing that it will soon be active with sea life gives her a sense of solace. Even in her death, being uh, a reef on the bottom of the ocean helps to preserve life in the ocean. Like they said, now, since they just dropped that school, the fish are already there. She thought it would be the neatest thing to grow coral. <laughs> With the approach of a summer squall, it's time to head back to shore. But for those whose loved ones will stay behind, there's always the opportunity to return. I think it's awesome. I think it's fantastic. I think my husband's finally at peace and he's happy where he's at. And I will come back and visit and I will dive on the site. Within months, the reefs will be active with sea life, a fitting memorial for those who loved the ocean. It's almost like watching someone grow again. You know, she's coming alive again, and to, to us, that's, that's something unique in a different way. We are tied to the ocean, and when we go back to the sea, 
Whether it is to sail or to watch it, we are going back from whence we came. to know what he looks from the inside out because I never could figure it out on the outside. <laughs> Joyce Yoder and her family have made an unusual decision. They have chosen to memorialize her husband <laughs> by putting his remains in an artificial reef ball made of concrete. They are visiting one last time before it is placed on the bottom of the ocean, but they're not grieving. We look at this as an opportunity to celebrate, not to mourn, because his life and his memory is going to live on through the reef and through the the thoughts and processes that he's had in his life. The Reef Ball Development Group of Decatur, Georgia, began making artificial reefs in the early 90s. But in 1998, they started the Eternal Reefs program as a memorial option. My father-in-law came over for dinner, said, Don, I got a favor to ask you. When I pass away, I'm going to be cremated, and I want you to take my remains and put them in those artificial reefs you build. I'd rather spend eternity down there with all that life and excitement going on than in a field with a bunch of old dead people. Since then, the program has placed roughly 250 memorials for people like William Yoder, who loved life and the ocean. He was a person who believed in living life to the fullest one day at a time. Oh, Dad, that's one day at a time. He always said that, you know, you come from the earth and the water, and that's where he wanted to go back. So being buried at sea was very important for him, too. Unlike going to, you know, normal cemeteries and all, it's kind of dreary and, you know, it's not real comfortable for a lot of people, but going out to a reef or going fishing on a site and are actually diving on it and seeing all the life and the fish and the growth is uh, much more enlightening and uplifting for everybody. The Eternal Reefs program cooperates with the family throughout the process. They let them participate in making the concrete reef ball in the beginning and perform a site dedication on a boat at the end. All of us have in our veins the exact same percentage of salt in our blood that exists in the ocean. We are tied to the ocean. And when we go back to the sea, whether it is to sail or to watch it, we are going back from whence we came. John Kennedy, the sea. And it's been very rewarding and very fulfilling helping these people come to closure with their, um, the loss of a loved one, and at the same time doing something good for the world and the environment. Letting go is always so hard, and this was really a good way to let go. From South Padre Island, this is Lydia Saldana reporting.